I wonder if you have Pickens a winner. Hope so. George Pickens, I'm going to be on the over on his receiving yards. And this is going to be my favorite prop of the week. I was not expecting it to be my number one prop of the week. But then just shortly before we came on here, I looked up the odds and they had posted the posted the lines for this game. And this is available at 36 and a half yards. I was willing to play this up to 53 and a half. And it came in almost 20 yards below what I was willing to play it to. This is my third year doing these props, articles, and podcasts, and I've never been that far off. Usually when I set a line of what I'm willing to take, I end up being within five five yards or so on one of these yardage props, maybe up to seven or ten every so often, but this is crazy. I, I'm really shocked by it. His previous low on this prop for the season was 42 and a half. That was in weeks one and two, um, week two being the last Browns game. And, it, you know, it makes sense that the number would be a little bit lower against the Browns, given how good their defense has played. But this number was at 53 and a half just two weeks ago. So to drop that much is shocking. Now, the reason why I still like it, even though obviously this is one of, if not the best defense in the league this year, it's all about the Browns' coverage tendencies. They are they play man coverage at the highest rate in the league, 45%. League average is only 24%. So every week I always look up whoever's playing the Browns, how does that change how does that change how they spread the ball around? Because it gives us an opportunity to gain an edge here. If, if there's a big discrepancy between how they're spreading the ball around in their offense, man coverage versus zone coverage, because almost every week you're getting a zone heavy defense and the Browns are really one of the few outliers here and the Steelers are a great one for this because Pickens target share 35% versus man coverage 20% versus zone so he sees a significant boost against a team like the Browns and sure enough in their first meeting when I said that line was his previous low of the season at 127 yards on 10 targets so they went after him in that game they want to get him the ball in one-on-one situations that's his role in the offense now you would be correct to point out that Deontay Johnson didn't play in that game. And, you know, it's fair to wonder if that has an effect, but looking at when both Pickens and Johnson are on the field at the same time this season against man coverage, Pickens target share is 38%. So actually even higher target share. That's probably the fact that it's higher. is probably a little bit of a small sample size fluke, but point being they love Pickens in man coverage situations they want to get him the ball in those spots and he's going to see a lot of it against the browns so with this line being so low i mean i mean it's so low that that could be two receptions you know they could easily hit him for a 20 yard reception and a 17 yard reception and there he's over just like that because they're going to give him one-on-one opportunities down the field so love this prop this week um let's move on to your next one uh, we'll take a Hopkins skip and a jump over to DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, DeAndre Hopkins' longest reception over 21 and a half yards. This is another one. The line came in a little lower than I was expecting. I was willing to play this up to 24 yards, but it's down at 21 and a half, probably because we played this last week and lost. But I'm going to trust the process here because if you remember last week, we played this because of the rate that Will Levis is throwing downfield. He's thrown at least 15 yards downfield on 35% of attempts this season. The next highest is Deshaun Watson at 25%. So a 10 percentage point increase over the next most aggressive passer. And that, even though we lost this prop last week, in fact, I think all of the Titans receivers um, lost their longest reception prop last week, which was surprising given the rate that they're throwing downfield. But looking at the big picture and the rate that Will Levis was giving them opportunities down the field, he fully met our expectations. Last week, 36% of his throws were 15 or more yards downfield. As I mentioned, 35% is his season average. So right in line with what we were expecting from him. And then 28% of his throws last week were 20 or more yards downfield. That was a season high. So he was continuing to be aggressive just as we expected, just didn't complete those passes this week. But if this rate of downfield usage continues for Hopkins and for the other Titans receivers, they're going to hit the overs on these longest reception props pretty consistently. Like I said, this is available at 21 and a half yards with it. You know, if, uh, if Levis is throwing 20 or more yards downfield on one out of every four passes, like last week, you only, it's only going to be one cat. I mean, one catch and it could happen multiple times throughout the games because he's getting so many opportunities. So don't love this as much as the Pickens prop, just because that Pickens prop is so ridiculous, so much lower than I expected. But this is this is a great opportunity. I think against the Jaguars defense, I should mention too, that's 
good, but certainly not near the top of the league in, in defending downfield. I think I lost Todd again. Nope, oh, I'm there. Right. Um, I, I, I muted myself that time. Um, 